Hello and welcome to my first ever devlog video. In this series I want to show you the game I'm currently working on. It's basically an action adventure where this little guy will travel and explore the world. Basically like an open world game, but just without any budget and in 2D. Because I have no idea how to do 3D modeling or use Blender. And this is what I have right now. You can see I've made a small map and added an enemy that is actually one of the many iterations from the main character you play as and had a little fun with the foliage and the overall feel to the scene, with all the particles and post-processing. But let me show you a little bit of how I got to this stage. So first things off, I'm developing the game in Unity, a game engine that allows you to make video games without having to make one from scratch. I found out about it after a long time questioning whether or not I should try making video games, and I first started off with the art. Amazing. That's when I entered the wonderful world of pixel art and started learning it. So I initially wanted to make everything in the game be 16 by 16 pixels, but I figured it would be too small for the enemies and characters, and just scratched that idea. So remember this enemy? Yeah. I've gone through quite a few versions of the player sprite, some of which I use as test subjects. And after countless hours invested into this, I eventually settled with the one you're seeing right now. I also made the walking and running animation. I think it looks kind of decent. And compared to this one, yeah, this is definitely an improvement. Then I worked on the tile set for the scene. And yeah, although I said the characters are not going to be 16 by 16 pixels, the tiles for the ground build. So I brought these tiles to the Unity project and made this little scene. Next on the list was the character movement. At this point, I had also made the controller player script, so the player can now walk around and face different directions. And you can also toggle sprint when you hit the shift key. I have to confess that the rotation of the sprite was surprisingly difficult, not when moving, but when staying idle. Basically, whenever the player stops moving, it's very difficult to make it face diagonally. But after a few hours, I eventually fixed it with this counter functionality. So now there is a slight delay when you release two keys at the same time. Then I experimented with the foliage. After quite a bit of testing with the tile method, followed by a lot of head banging against the wall trying to figure out how to properly do the layering and add the lighters to these, I scratched that idea and just used prefabs of the same whole sprite. Will this come bite me in the future? Probably. But it works for the time being. I'm sure there was a way to fix these bugs, but my brain had turned off by that point. The bright side to this is that it makes it a lot easier to work with, and I guess it can make the scene look more organic. I also implemented this transparency feature for the trees using this code, so allow me to explain. So when the player enters the trigger collider of the tree, a code routine will start. You also need a trigger exit for when the player leaves. And then I enumi, I enumi, I enumerator, and I enumi, and <laughs> why is this word so hard to say? And then and that thing. What this does is that it takes two values in the parameters, and inside the code block, you get the alpha value of the sprite render variable you declare here, and assign all this to a float variable. Next, you make a for loop to make the transition of the alpha value of the color and instantiate a new color for the sprite to change its opacity, in which we put four parameters. This one represents the red component, this one green, this one blue, and finally the alpha. For the alpha, we use this math function, in which we put three parameters. The first one being the start value, the second the end value, and this t is the interpolation point between the two floats. So this alpha represents the original opacity of the sprite. This one represents the opacity we want to get to when the player is behind the tree, and this is the time it takes to do it. I say time because we use this for loop. So then when this t variable reaches number 1, the interpolation point at the end of the coroutine will be the end value and not a middle point. Finally, having assigned a new color to the sprite, we transform the opacity of the sprite using this line of code. And at the end, we write yield return null. Because... Because syntax. All this explanation just to make a tree transparent. Heck yeah! To add a little bit more to the environment, I made another version of the tree. I made this bush and this little rock. 
I also added colliders to the trees and the other foliage I made. And now the player can interact just fine with the environment. I also tried making water tiles, and while they look okay, there is a lot of room for improvement. I have to admit I was inspired by the dirt texture used in Stardew Valley, except mine doesn't look as good. To end this devlog, I wanted to add a little bit more detail, so I made this leaf sprite animation for the particles using Unity's particle system. I also added the post-processing effects just to make it look more immersive, but I realized it's a bit too early for that, so I won't be using it for the time being. Anyways, I think I'll end this devlog here. If you have any suggestions or feedback, let me know. Next time I think I'll work on the combat and improve the enemy AI, or whatever is on the to-do list. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next devlog. Someday. Eventually.